Hi everyone and welcome to today's new webinar session, Seating Prescription Part 2. Following on from the last webinar session, we will continue to work our way through the Seating Prescription Checklist. Today we will be focusing on chair measurements and the importance of chair setup. Now as we know, this needs to be individualised to each and every client. So this session should only be used as a guide and if you do have any client specific queries then you know how to get in touch with me. Keep an eye out for the next webinar session, Seating Prescription Part 3, where we will conclude the Seating Prescription Checklist. Thank you and enjoy. First of all, let's review the Prescription Checklist. As already mentioned, today we will be focusing on chair measurements and setup. Every chair must be set up to fit its user. If it's not, then it can cause more harm than good. The basic dimensions must be based on the client's measurements, managing posture appropriately whilst ensuring maximum contact with support surface to distribute their weight evenly. The functions and accessories must also be safe and appropriate for the client. The way in which the chair is used will influence the positioning, which can impact on the client's risk of developing secondary complications, including postural deterioration, pressure injury and decline in health. Here you will see an image of the important chair measurements that we need to consider during the seating prescription. You have seat height from the popliteal fossa at the back of the knee to the footrest or floor, depending on where that support is coming from. Depth, so from the back of the pelvis to the back of the knee. Width, the width of the pelvis within the chair. Armrest height, from the seat to the elbow. Seat back height, from the back of the head down to the seat base. Two other measurements that we need to really consider are back angle, which is essentially hip flexion range of movement, and the leg rest angle, which will be based on the hamstring's muscle length. Now these are critical to proper use of the chair functions. Remember that these are guidelines only, and they will be affected by size and body shape. Let's run through exactly why chair measurements and correct chair setup is vital for seat improvision. Let's start with seat width. The width adjustment will help to laterally stabilize the pelvis. Correct seat width can reduce the tendency for our clients to lean or shuffle the pelvis. These undesirable movements can result in pelvic obliquity or pelvic rotation and then the posture will become increasingly unstable with unequal loading of tissues. Left unmanaged, this leaning posture could lead to the development of a scoliosis for example. A chair with the right seat depth ensures pelvic stability by supporting the pelvis posteriorly. Without this posterior support, the pelvis can tilt backwards and encourage sacral sitting with a posterior pelvic tilt. If the seat depth is too long, the user won't be able to flex their knees over the seat edge, so they will slide forward in the chair to allow knee flexion. If the seat depth is too shallow, the area over which body weight is distributed may be reduced, which can increase the risk of pressure injury. Seat height is important for maintaining independence and function if the user is ambulant or is still able to rise to stand in for transfers. If the chair's seat height is too high, the user will be unstable when they rise to stand in or it will encourage a posterior pelvic tilt as the user seeks foot support. If the seat height is too low, then they may not have adequate strength to complete a sit to stand. If the user is hoist transferred, then correct seat to foot rest height is needed to achieve adequate foot support, which is critical for pelvic and upper trunk stability further up the body segments. We also can't forget about armrest height. 
This is important for users who can still rise to standing as it allows them to push up and out of the chair. It also encourages repositioning and enables our users optimum upper limb position for activities. Another useful way to get the message across about how important correct chair measurements and setup is, is to look at the different postural challenges and how they might be impacted by the chair measurements and setup. First, we have a posterior pelvic tilt. Now, extrinsically, this can be caused by the seat height being too high, the footrest being too low, the seat depth being too long, the armrests being too low. It could even be due to an incorrect back angle for the hip range of movement and also inappropriate use of the elevating leg rest as if the client doesn't have good range of movement at the knee. Elevating leg rest will pull the pelvis down and forward in the chair creating this posterior pelvic tilt. With an anterior pelvic tilt Extrinsically, it could be caused by the incorrect lumbar support within the chair, forcing the client into an increased lumbar lordosis, consequently resulting in an anterior pelvic tilt. Another thing that can also cause an anterior pelvic tilt is an unstable or sloping base, which could be the case if we are prescribing a chair with a slight forward tilt that assists standing, but then it's not returned to level once the client is back in the chair. These feelings of instability can increase muscle tone and its effects for some clients, resulting in significant pain. Pelvic obliquity could be caused by the seat being too wide, allowing the client room to shuffle or lean, which we discussed shortly before. Maybe the armrests are too high, too low, or unequal, again causing the trunk to lean to one side. Lack of support for the pelvis or trunk, and an incorrect back angle that doesn't accommodate the client's hip range of movement could cause pelvic obliquity, as the client needs to open up the hip angle on one side for comfort. And finally, we have pelvic rotation, which can have the same extrinsic causes as a pelvic obliquity. So the seat being too wide, the back angle not being set correctly to accommodate a reduced hip range of movement, or a lack of support at the pelvis. I hope this has made it clear why it's so important to get the chair measurements and the chair setup correct. If we do not set up the chair based on the client's measurements, then we can actually cause these postural challenges in our clients who might not have any damage to the body systems. During our training days, we go into this in more detail and actually get you into the chair so you can really see the impact that measurements and setup have on the body. Please contact us if you want to know any more information about this. Thank you for joining us again. Please now keep an eye out for the third and final part of our seating prescription webinars via our newsletter, where we will be concluding the seating prescription checklist, focusing on the critical angles for sitting and pressure care. Thanks again and take care.